Today is Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Survivor Ghost Island, week four, episode three. I mean, episode five. This week, the episode's titled A Diamond in the Rough, and that was spoken by Chris. Previously on Survivor at the Navidi tribe, the new Navidi tribe, a cross tribal alliance, is targeting Chris. Over on the new Malolo tribe, Michael offered up hope with his idol, and he vows to play it right. He bluffs at tribal council. They target Bradley. But, as Propes tells us, he was unable to reverse the curse. Propes tells us Navidi won, but can they avoid tribal, he asks, after that one's over. Okay, it's night 12. Coming back from tribal council, Bradley tells us he was sure. That he was going on. Mm Mm-hmm. No doubt about it in his mind. Good lie there, Michael. Good lie. But he was very happy that the original Navidi held. They saved him. He tells us that he had viewed Michael as a fratty bro, and he's happy that he outed himself. (laughs) Do you think it was wise of Michael to apologize? No, I don't think he owed him an apology. No, but was it, you know, good of him to go through the motions? Nope. Of saying, hey, you know, just trying to save our side. I don't think you apologize. You say, well, I did the best. That was what I thought. the best I could. Didn't work out, but good play, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Michael's bummed, though, for sure. He's telling us he's had a hard fall, and he acknowledges that he was not able to reverse the curse. And Jenna thanks him for sharing the idol and, and tells him he was very brave to do that. Yep. And he knows he's got his work cut out for him. Okay, so there was nothing new. They weren't rewriting history. It was just a straightforward recap and probes previously on Survivor. Well, no twists this time. The thing is, though, is Brad said he didn't see him as a threat at all until then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He and now he, was, he definitely does. Right. Thought he so, was a fratty bro guy. <laughs> yep. He totally underestimated him. Yep. Well, so I had Michael pick to go. At that point, I'm thinking, okay. These cards are pointing in the right direction. This is this is positive. That's what I wanted to hear. So I'm happy on the exit from the Night of Tribal Council. And I thought, I hope you're wrong, because I had Crisco. <laughs> yep, we were split <laughs> in the house this well, week. Yeah. Went in different directions. Well, we we didn't we never really talk about it. Usually, with our choices, sometimes I'll remember to ask you who you chose, but. But uh, usually when we sit down to watch, it's like, who did you pick? Right. So we didn't really know. Because we don't want to influence the other too much or to be the other's excuse for a choice that may not have panned out. That's know, probably what we're it on me many more, times. more protective of. Mm-hmm. I have? Mm-hmm. Okay. I see. I'm sure that's what you were talking about. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Day 13, let's do a reward challenge. What did you think of this one, the way it was set up? It was good. Going to leap over some tables, going to move some big sandbags, uncover a lever, and then we're going to throw some sandbags. Well, Chris was anyway. Yeah. Well, people intended to throw sandbags. Well, And it ended up being relatively close for a little bit. No, it wasn't. Before they went to go throw the sandbags, it was. Oh, well, okay then. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, it, was, it wasn't even you know what, remotely. It wasn't remotely close <laughs> overall, but... Yeah, well, you jumped even, to the end. They didn't even get one I was flag. building to that. Not even one. So Sebastian looked over at Chris like he could figure out how to throw by watching Chris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's he doing that? How's he doing that? But I thought, why is Chris throwing so hard? But then when he said he played baseball and he was a pitcher, I was like, oh, okay, he's used to throwing it hard and fast as he can. And he saw how effective it was from yes, the get-go. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he did really good. Now, usually for this reward, I ended up looking at the actual reward itself a little differently than I have in the past. Because we, we always talk about this and go, well, it's sugar. It's a sugar bomb. It's a 
it's a caffeine bomb. It's it's one of those things where you're going to take it and you're going to crash. But one of the things that I had done over the last six months is experiment with intermittent fasting uh, up to doing like seven day fast, one day, three days, two day, three day, uh, all the way up to a seven day fast. And I have a deeper appreciation for how one might look at <laughs> the, although I didn't abstain from coffee during that time, I definitely allowed black coffee, the, uh, how one might look at those pastries under those circumstances mm-hmm. and the, okay. the tastes and the cravings that you develop when mm-hmm. you're not partaking mm-hmm. of food. Now, they are having food. And in some of the extra videos, you got to hear several people talk about how the impact of having such a small amount of food because they're not living off the land. It doesn't sound like either tribe is doing a good job, even though they've got fishing gear. They're not pulling in protein sources. So they're really getting by on that reduced rice ration primarily. You know, I, I, you you reminded me. I almost never drank coffee all these years, you mm-hmm. know, 20 years. I might have a cup of coffee a week or something. And, and then you were, you were really hooked on coffee. And I kept pushing until you got off coffee. And now all of a sudden, I'm drinking coffee every morning <laughs> with you. Yeah. How did that get turned around? Uh, you developed, now, acquired a taste for it you hadn't had before? <laughs> I know exactly why I was using it. I needed I needed the energy. I know, but I burst. never did. I never even thought of it. It That's, just didn't enter my, my, my mind at all. You can, whether it's monster drinks or five-hour energies or just the caffeine hit from a soda or a cup of coffee, that's your medicating to help you manage your <laughs> awareness and your focus throughout the day. And uh, I've definitely been a I partaker of that. I think you told me that. it was good for gout, that it would help with gout. Yeah. And I thought, okay, there's a lot some of, coffee. A lot of positives. It, you, must have, you probably got that from somewhere else, though, because uh, you don't no, normally you go off me. of... What I say. Well, uh, I probably went and looked and confirmed it. Mm-hmm. But All right. But well, in any case, I, I you have a taste that, for it now. I know I do, and that's so weird. It's so weird. Okay. Yeah, it is. Well, it's because I've, I've never had that coffee thing. Never even really liked it that much, and now I do. We were not at a... Maybe it's just because we're older. Maybe, maybe. we have some... Because you develop appreciations... For different well, taste, the older you get. This is the thing. Because I think it's such a sweet gesture that even if you've already had coffee when I get up, mm-hmm. he's fixed the pot so that all I have to do is hit the button and he's already made my coffee. And that's very sweet. Okay. <laughs> so, and it's, you know, I kind of got used to, well, that that's just so nice. Because mm-hmm. probably I'd have gone on and not, not worry about it, but... But I, but it's just a sweet thing. So okay, thank Why you. Not, you're welcome. I don't okay. think you're we, hooked on it in any way, or you don't get the caffeine headaches that I get when I come off of no, it. No, I usually have a cup. So you're fine. Occasionally, too, if I really didn't get much sleep and I have to do something mm-hmm. where I need my brain. <laughs> so so I could. For them, being off of it for let's see, that was on day thirteen. This was a two day cycle. For this episode, thir- day 13 and day 14, being away from it for 13 days and then getting to have it again, along with getting to have a calorie-rich I meal. Tell you what, let's don't have coffee for the next 13 days. Yeah. I'm, and then let's see. I got stuff I got to get done, so <laughs> we'll have to schedule that for a different time. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I like your idea. We'll, I we'll can look, do it. look forward to that in the future at some point, just not... <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. Okay, your no. schedule's changing. I'll give you that. Yep. Okay. Back to Survivor. I think we Well, I was back. Story. You you I, I know. Get back on track. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> so okay. I can imagine how good that would be to have some fresh brewed coffee and how significant those very tasteful pastries, although that it's pretty much a flash in the engine there yep. in terms of fuel. But when you're talking about a two-day cycle where you get it after the reward challenge and you've got an immunity challenge coming up the, the next, next day, day, could be a boost for sure. Either that or, You could still you be know, riding on it. Mm, and you get to get up and have a, co- a cup of coffee before the next challenge. Definitely that, if they saved it for the, some for yeah, the next when day. When you got to crank on something or you want to mm. be super alert to solve a puzzle. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, that might that might have helped. Okay. Huh? Okay. So they they went to rocks, of course, and <laughs> to decide who goes to Ghost Stephanie Island. Stephanie yep. goes to Ghost Island. All right. So I'm thinking. Woohoo! This is a good thing. I am your excited. USB. Yes, for my USB. So this is this is going to really pan out. This is going to be the week that we get to talk about how Ghost Island was not a dud. Because my USB is going to go. She's going to play. She's not going to be under the same constraints that Kellen was. Mm -mm. She'll be, oh, yeah, heck, yeah, I'll trade my vote for a shot at an immunity idol. You betcha. I need it way more than I need my vote. My vote already doesn't count for anything. So that was going to be an easy decision for her. And then another big, eh. Blah. Yes. Yeah. This, hmm. What, What do you think Propes was feeling at this point when that? That happens in that sequence. Here you are. You've got potentially this fantastic story, this single mom raising two kids, dreamed of being on Survivor. She's here, and you're and you you're asking the team now, wh- which one is this? Oh yeah, it's another one of those don't plays. Why did we do don't plays? I bet you they had that conversation. Why did we decide to have so and many that of many these? Of them. Yeah, so many of these be don't plays. Now, we know they've taken flack in the past for having too many things, advantages and idols, in play. But you've added this new element. You want it to be significant. And so far, it's, it's been a big kind of been a dud. There's no kind of about it. I'm, I'm I, with I'm Paul. I'm kind. I'm with all the other super fans. This is a straight up dud as a mm, That's a what theme. I'm saying. <laughs> there's, there's no... Kinda. There's no middle ground here. Uh, maybe it'll pay off more later. It's not right now. But it's it wasn't one of those. What I liked about seeing her there was that it wasn't one of those breaker moments. She she said, "Yeah, I've done this, but I've been through these things. I I know how to be on my own. I'm strong on my own. I'm here to show my kids how to be strong on your own." And so. She cooked some rice and got her an extra large portion of rice, at least. Yep. And uh, she made good with, made peace with her time there on Ghost Island, even though she didn't catch a break. Ghost Island, you're a dud. Well, and then we get the famous line from Chris about him being a diamond in the rough and watch him pat himself on the back and before we move along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was impressive and he was good, so. You got to give him that. Yep. Okay, anything else about Stephanie at uh, Ghost Island that you want to talk about? No, I think I covered it. Okay. What did you think about Chris calling chocolate for himself? And then he walked it back a little. He was like, well, you know, I won, so I should get the chocolate, you know. But if somebody else wants some, we could split it. But he had already made that pretty clear where Mm -hmm. the boundary was on the chocolate one. I think he realized what he said and was just trying to backtrack a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) So, I don't think it was successful. Because I, I, I might have fought him over chocolate unless there was fruit. I'd rather had the fruit and get some, at least some value out of fruit. Yeah. <laughs> it's all pretty quick it's burn, though. Paste. It is, but still. It's all I'll about the flavor. Go with that. Yeah. Or, you know, I would have said if there were, everybody wanted a little bit, just cut them up and have different pieces. Everybody have a little bit of each. Mm hmm. You know. Yeah, that way everybody gets to share. Get a lot of different share. flavors. He's not about that. He likes himself a lot, even though he, and, I don't believe he, he thinks, thinks he's a he diamond in the rough at all. <laughs> I think no, he's, he thinks he's he a thinks diamond. He's, he's quite, quite and finished. And a big one. Yes. Yes, I agree. But at least they eat and drink, and then Donathan gets really emotional. Uh, but just before we get to that, what would you think about James calling out Chris as being such a huge asset? I don't even remember it. No, it didn't register. <laughs> it didn't so register. yeah, James James had a moment where he was talking about how much he valued Chris and how significant Chris was for them at this point. It was certainly more significant when they go on to Donathan. Okay. But it overshadowed it enough. It just seemed to erase the James moment from your perception, I guess. Yep, it did. <laughs> Well, and it was nice of Laurel to go out and be with him. And I really like how she lifted him up. Mm-hmm. That was really solid. Gave him a hug and yep. nurtured him a little bit. She, yeah, I think she definitely she's dropped the well. nurture energy on him there. She yep. did. Good on her. She was a comfort. Yeah. And that's what he needed right then. And good on Chris. He recognized it as well. 
that some, but I mean, his was more from a gra- uh, game strategy. It was straight uh, up manipulative. Laurel's probably was too, but she still has a. a I don't know. There a seems something truer between her and Donna. There seemed to be something truer yeah, in yeah. hers, even though Donathan tells us that he valued Chris's more because Chris got in there and really worked it. related. And oh, he's a good guy. He did what I did. Mm-hmm. You know, he stepped up. So now we've got the conflict of Donathan. I don't want to get rid of Chris. He's a nice guy. Yep. You know. Hmm. And I have to decide what's best for Donathan. All but, right, Donna. but can so, he? Donathan's story arc is probably about to take off. They're definitely laying some groundwork here for that. Yeah, I think so too. But um, I don't know. I think Donathan might be a little bit wishy washy. But I think he'll go with the majority of who he's aligned with. Donathan's a solid comes. coattail rider. And he, but I think he has awareness of yeah, he does what he can and can't do, and so he's he's sort of feeling out where his best play is, and it's good on him for having options, right? Even though yeah. that was a significant emotional moment for him, and Chris did not do that in an altruistic way, but they did have commonality that they were able to leverage and. I think Chris was successful in making that bond that he was targeting. Well, I really he set out for. I really liked it that Laurel comforted him more around his guilt for being gone. Yeah. You know, and that that was obviously beneficial for him. I like that we got to see that side of him, mm-hmm. but I also like that he didn't he didn't wallow in it. You know, he had his moment. It reminded him of home, and he. He allowed himself to be in that. Right. And then let go, came back. So, day 14, immunity challenge. What community did you think challenge. About it? I think this was a fun one. And you'd be tempted to think that given Kellen's excellent puzzle performance, that Malolo was an easy bet for a win there. But I suspected it may not go that way, that it would somehow go against them. Well, that's why I didn't choose them. Yeah. I saw that it was Bradley and that You saw that there was Kelly. a puzzle at yeah, the end. There that's, was I a remember puzzle. You, you said, hey, did you see the new video? It looks like there's a puzzle at the end. Yep. And I thought, oh, so-and-so. And, and then against James and Dominic. And I went, okay, I'm going that's to easy. get their le- losing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was wrong. James okay. has yet to actually perform in a significant way in a challenge, so well, it would be easy to think it might did. go that way. Yeah, so that's how I based my decision. Yeah, I, I like the element where they had to grab the, the boogie boards or the body boards and run them out there, and there are three bags with the uh, numbers on them that they need for the combination lock that they have to solve, and that they reel them in on those body boards. That was fun. And we had seen in Next Time on Survivor where Desiree gets reeled in, but she submarines the thing. And I don't think that was by choice. <laughs> no, she would have preferred not to do it that way, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But I, what a trooper when it came her turn. Man, mm-hmm. that, was, that was awesome. Well, in both um, uh, Libby... And uh, Chelsea had troubles, and well, Desi too. But. Yeah, all three of those ladies ended up having significant trouble. But it was pretty; it was reasonably close by the time they yeah, got back. Yeah. In in terms of that, there was a little bit of a head start on the puzzle, but it, or rather, on the uh, combination lock where they have the the three different pairs of numbers that they have to get in the right order to undo that to get the key, so that they can unlock the slide puzzle. Well, um, Navidi had this just huge lead by the time they got the last person back out of the water Mm -hmm. and uh, the other drive and so i thought it was probably over then Mm. but nope but at least they started the puzzle first and maybe that's the only reason they uh won it they had they just had more time to figure it out i liked that chris had already figured out what the word was i'm not sure if they figured it out or the words, rather, for the slide puzzle, Ghost Island. Oh, I'm not sure if they... Chris did? Yeah, Chris called it for Navidi when they started working on it, and then the Malolo folks knew, too, but I think they might have just heard Chris. I think Chris was a little too loud there. But Angela seemed to be a significant help. The camera 
focused on her, calling things out to help Dominic and uh, James there. Well, that's a first. Yeah. She had seemed like she had a positive impact. That was the way I read it as they were working on the slide puzzle. The, the two-row, it looked like a, a two-row slide puzzle to get the, uh, the words Ghost Island together there. So why do you think that Jeff chose to question them in the ways that he does at Tribal Council after that challenge? Yeah, I don't know. That was a little was, a little different, wasn't it? Yeah, Sometimes it was he'll throw a question out, but I guess he was he was doing his Dr. Phil thing. How did that make you feel? He's, and, well, <laughs> Kellen, and usually he'll see Kellen's reactions and he'll mm-hmm. he will maybe call it's because her out she's so expressive. I don't know. Yeah, but then he you know pulls out the whole thing. Well, is old Malolo is still in trouble? You didn't need to do that to Tribal Council. Yeah. Do so you I think mean, he's overstepping a little? Yes, but, well, I don't know. I, th- I thought he obviously just wanted to get something going back <laughs> before tribal or right. something. Right, wanted to f- fire it up before they went back to I camp to have the discussion. I don't think it made a bit of difference because, uh, to me, it was stating probably, the obvious. probably worth a shot because you never know if Kellen might just mouth off and say something because they've got the, the dominant alliance. Yeah. And instead, she owned it and said, now, yeah, I really let everybody down. And that's certainly troubling. And then he throws the soft pitch to Michael. Hey, you worried? You, Steph, Jenna? It might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm worried. Uh, yeah, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, definitely that's why in I thought trouble. It just seemed out of place. That That's just something he doesn't typically do at mm. that time. Yeah, but he, he does like the Captain Obvious questions to sort of tee things up. So maybe that's all it was. Okay. He was feeling that. Well, and then uh, Kellen tells us that either Stephanie, Michael, or Jenna are going. Yeah. I goofed the puzzle, but there wasn't really any pressure. So I don't think they're throwing them. They're, they just weren't successful. There's an obvious yeah. question. Are they throwing them to just to chew up old Malolo members at this I, point. I think they might have discussed that so that n- no more of the old Navidi goes home. Mm-hmm. Given how it went the first mm-hmm. time. Because they're aware now that Dominic, I, I think they know it's Dominic, mm-hmm. that that anyway, that old Navidi is not a solid unit anymore. And um, they got nothing to lose. They got the numbers. Unless someone found an item. Yeah, it's definitely a risk. Uh, that would be a. I don't know that I would want to put my game at risk like Mm-mm. that. So. Yeah, I think we might. Think have they're legitimately heard losing. Them talk about it, mm-hmm. throwing the challenge if right. they were. So, I don't think so. But it it is a strategy, for that particular reason. I can see why they would consider it. Sure. Okay, now Jenna's going to talk to us about her angry face and. <laughs> how it's hard for her to turn that off so and yet we see that she can smile beautifully yep and smile at sebastian and mm-hmm. all he's interested in is someone to do his braids yep <laughs> it's like jenna can do braids i don't want to get rid of her look at my hair mm-hmm. i need someone to do my hair let's keep jenna okay fine even though her hair smells like a dead weasel he tells us <laughs> <laughs> okay Thanks for that. I don't know if he's nagging her or what What was going on with that. Where, hmm. Were you surprised that Stephanie approached Bradley, or do you think she really approached everyone? I think she probably tried to reach out to everyone, yeah, but that she was my guess. recognized his role. So mm-hmm. she made the effort. This is, this is a really tough one. Obviously, they were all feeling pretty bummed when the odds are so stacked against you. Oh, yeah, you have it's, to. It's really interesting to see how someone responds in that scenario. And it seems like she might have opted for the sympathy card, the single mom sympathy card. Yeah, I don't think that would work well with him. Not, not, not only would it not work well, but it really highlights she was a bigger threat with exactly. a story at the end. Yeah. And so that's a that's a tough one to play. You you can play the you know the the sad face and the crying eyes and well, and all that. And she but, said she was sucking up to him, but I yeah, I she don't knew know. What she was, she doing. was really you know, and and they, that her eyelashes. I I don't see him as buying into any of that. So I'm not sure why she thought he would. But well, it's her tool. That's like one of her go-to tools is to use that emotional play. And if they did as good a job as they set out to do with locking down 
the interactions and locking down the emotions associated with these folks, Sebastian's <laughs> interactions aside, <laughs> then it, it could really nullify any effect like that. So their ability to control the social interactions and not go too far. It looked like they were doing a better job of pretending to listen this time. Yeah, I think so. And, and interact and respond to someone at, on a more equal level as opposed to, hey, we've got the upper hand kind well, of response. I think Brad could see the advantage in that just in case someone else had an idol. Mm-hmm. So. And we see Desiree call for targeting Steph. There's different options that are being proposed by different people. But once again, she seems to call the hit. And when Bradley's got a concern about that idol, what's Desiree do? She checked Stephanie's bag to see if there's something in there. Well, before that, though, Chelsea and Kellen wanted Jenna. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Chelsea came back to Kellen and said, well, they want Stephanie. Right. But at least Kellen said, okay, if they, yeah. if that's what they want, okay. You know, I'll, the I'll go with the majority. Sandra Diaz Twine play there. <laughs> well, why would you me. fight that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I have to get my way for who goes as long as one of them goes as long as it's one of them i don't care which one because they mean they equally mean nothing to our alliance so it doesn't matter which way you need to pivot well and then brad comes up and says well let's just get rid of michael he's smart yep and certainly there's reason to make that call because they were afraid that stephanie might have gotten an idol or an advantage out at uh, ghost island but i think desi looking in her bag Kind of sealed the deal. A little bit more comf- yeah. comfortable. About yeah, that. I think that was as bold, but I think that was a, a solid play. Well, and she probably did she it had just no, before tribal. No qualms about it at all. So she's like, oh, yeah, I'm checking that. I'm making sure. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. I'm crossing crossing off these, these concerns about threats. She wanted her targeted. She got her targeted. Well, and uh, Michael pitched to Brad. I, that seemed I, really weak, though. I thought so because he went with, "Oh, but I want to play this for so long," and I think he you did just made that everyone out there as a fan. You made every you made that argument that you made the same argument everyone out there has. So well, you didn't like it when he when he cried all. and said, "Well, I really want it." Yeah, it's like okay, great. Eighteen, you said, or something yeah. like that. Because I want it. Yes. Well, everybody wants it. Or exactly. they wouldn't be out there. Mm-hmm. But, but still. But I, I admire that nobody gave up. Nobody rolled over. They didn't just accept their fate. That At least from what we got to see, they were all working and trying. Why do you think they showed Brad saying that we have the numbers, we're in control? Because I thought then, I thought, hmm. Usually they say that just before there's some surprise and they pop something that on That would them, be the reason exactly, to give you some doubt, to make you unsure yeah, but as they head into the vote. we already knew that had any of them found anything, they would have already shown us. Mm-hmm. So it, it just seemed out of place. I've enjoyed a lot of the edit this season, but now the last two weeks... With what I see on Next Home on Survivor, we go into the immunity challenge and I think, oh, well, given what I was shown and the fact that I hadn't seen it yet, I got to with some confidence believe that I know the outcome because we didn't see this scene with Se- and we're going into Sebastian, the immunity challenge. Yeah, with Sebastian smelling Jenna's hair and t- her talking about how she's trying to make that connection well, so I didn't she's put that not at risk. At all. You said, did you figure out who won? I figured out, who, and I'm like, no, I and I don't want to I didn't know. say it that way, but... you Well, still, I said, no, I don't want to know. I hadn't figured it out, and they don't tell me. And I didn't. No, no. I'm not, I appreciate Okay, that. it wasn't coming across necessarily that way with how you set it up, but I didn't. Uh-uh. But my point being that I think there's a weakness in how things are being presented if you, contrary to all... TV modern editing where they tell you what you're going to see and show you that you're going to see this and then you get to see it and then they come back from commercial and they tell you what you saw this the edit for stupid people that I like to call that if you have any ability to remember Are you calling me a stupid person? No, I'm saying that the editors I don't I didn't know how pay you got any attention. got there at all. <clears throat> no, we talk about this all the time with some of the other shows we like forged in fire or any of these shows where they 
show you what naked and afraid they show you in the beginning scenes oh. from what's coming up yeah the cool. voice they spend the first three minutes of the voice telling you what you're gonna see in the episode that night we fast forward those yeah we do I because i don't want to see that we don't want it spoiled we're there to watch the episode want to see it when it happens anyway there it's causing me a little bit of grief because I remembered seeing that scene in Next Time on Survivor, and now I'm thinking, I, I guess I know the outcome of the ah, immunity there challenge. We go. See, I never really remember. By the next week, I don't remember what they showed on Next On. So it doesn't have that much effect on me. <laughs> okay. Because I don't Fair really enough. remember. Yes. You'll say, What do you remember? They showed some. I go, No, I don't remember. Yeah. It, so I guess I've got a gripe. My point is I have a gripe about the edit, and the edit is spoiling some things for me. Okay. And that was what I had recognized, because it's two weeks in a row that's happened. I hope they stop doing that. Well, and if they stay on the air long enough, eventually you won't remember either, and it won't matter. That's a different point. <laughs> that, that's okay, got nothing to do speaking. with what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I would have the same problem. Regardless of how long they stay on, if I'm able to remember, especially... Well, that's what I'm saying. It's really you bad when be you're... able to remember. It's really bad when you're binging. You don't have a week oh, yeah, in between. yeah, 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 Well, that's different. You just go from next time on Survivor to, hey, here's 15, 20 minutes, and you're thinking, well, that I just saw this 15 minutes ago, that this scene, and it hasn't come up, so that tells me those people are in jeopardy. Okay, well, let's go to tribal council. Night 14, time for tribal. Kellen acknowledges, yes, one of these three original Malolo are going. That's when you really wish somebody had another idol. And it may pivot it. on a single sentence that's happened, a single statement someone has made. And Steph says, yes, going to Ghost Island puts you in jeopardy. It can hurt you because you miss out on those kinds of opportunities that Kellen was just describing. And Bradley acknowledges, yes, there's a risk for anyone who's gone to Ghost Island. You have to assume that they came back with an advantage. It's all solid and straightforward, I think, as they're laying it out here at this point. Well, and Michael, uh, Brad thinks Michael deserves to go home for what he did at the last tribal council. Even though Michael said, well, I was just trying to, you know, keep my people together. Michael's keep making my a case for himself just prior to that. I'm your best bet to win challenges, evidence potentially yep. to the contrary. Sebastian's clear. Yep, it's one of these three. And Kellen acknowledges that they are snowballing a bit as a tribe. Lots of, but there are a lot of ways to look at strength. Well, I kind of felt like Stephanie thought she might be going. You know, just the way she was talking. And, you know, she said the same thing Michael did. You know, I've, I've wanted to play for so long and I really got a lot of game left in me. And, and you know, I've made real relationships with people out here. And Do you I think she was really giving up? Keep playing. Was that her giving up? Is I don't that, think is that why she, she played no. the kid card? No, I don't think she was giving up. I just think she was... Fear of letting fearful, her children down? And fearful that it was going to be her. They all three had to be. They just spent the yeah. first part of Tribal Council talking about yeah. <laughs> going around the members of the original I didn't feel five. like Jenna, Jenna was nearly as nervous about it as Michael and Stephanie. Mm -hmm. She didn't seem to be to me. Let's let's talk about that a little bit going in about how, what did you think about folks talking about how she wasn't really a threat because she had no game. She didn't really offer that much. She, she was the least threat of the three. That doesn't really surprise me. And because she admits that she, uh, she doesn't seem to socially interact well mm -hmm. with the others or anyone. That she's working no, she, really hard to come out of her shell. Yeah, yeah. And she acknowledges that. And I think that's what they see, too. And that they can't tell that she's actually leading the play, that it's, it's mainly Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And then they saw Michael's game. So I do think they saw Stephanie as the biggest uh, strategic threat. Right. Even over Michael. Short and long term. I think that's yes. what really sealed her fate. Well, and that Michael, people will want to get Michael out just for his strength as the merge comes closer. But uh, Stephanie will just kind of get pushed to the side as a non-threat physically. Right. And be even more dangerous with her social with her With every good day social game. longer that she's yes. able to stay. Yeah, and I think that's, that's why they eventually decided on her. 
which Desiree pointed out, saying there's a clear purpose behind the vote yeah. tonight. We and found it'll be a apparent. good reason yes. to vote the so one I, out tonight. I think that story, what you described, Desiree had it on lock pretty much from the drop, given that she called the stuff play in the beginning of their deliberations. I was a little bit surprised at Michael talking about, well, you know, I've been watching this show since I was 13, and I thought, so five years Michael? Well, you you know his we age. We know they think it's ten they years. Think I know ten, yeah. But still, it's. I mean, anybody who's watched the show feels that way. That's not unique. It's not gonna. He's essentially making Desiree's point, which is of the three of them, he's the least. He's not as big a threat yeah. as Stephanie. He he tried that bluff that failed, so he's going to be viewed from some perspective as a failure at the game. Yep. Jenna's struggling to come out of her shell so of the three who do you target or you target stephanie yeah, well it's easy. and did stephanie really come up with some of that after he told jenna and stephanie he hadn't said anything about doing the whole double bluff who did come up with that idea is what i'd like to know all right so stephanie is out and i took a huge gamble with my picks this week i went ahead and said, I'm going to risk it, and I'm going to have her safe, and I got Michael going. So it was either going to be five or three. I went for the bold move, and I was rewarded for my boldness. Thank you, Jeff Probst. You're rewarded, as usual, for your boldness. (laughs) As many Survivor castaways are. That's what usually happens. Yeah, when they choose to play big. boldness. Yeah. I know. Sometimes it pays off. Yeah, you had another word that started with S. For me, when I explained what I was doing this week. Okay. I don't know what that is. I've already forgotten. (laughs) How convenient. (laughs) Okay, the votes are in. Desi gets a big old one. Does that mean that both Michael and Jenna voted for Stephanie as well? As Michael said, he was there to prove his loyalty. I'm sure Jenna was towing the line, too. So, yeah. Yeah, it was clear and easy. And Steph... She knew what was up. Somehow she knew that Desi was had her number, so she yeah. just will throw a little mm-hmm. throw in her way. And then Probst sums it up and says, "Yes, the Navidi five won at Tribal Council as an alliance, but they continue to lose as a tribe." And you know what they're thinking? That's fine. That works. No problem. Well, they got two more candidates before yeah. they even have well, to yeah. start stressing. Absolutely. And Michael turns to Brad and thanks him. So he's still kissing up to Brad, trying to stay in good. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me. He doesn't have anything else to do at this point unless he can come up with another idol. So, yeah, just wait to get voted out basically is where he is. Next on Survivor, Jeff tells us the battle lines are drawn. Dom and Chris are still squaring off. They're still trying to kill each other off. Yep. And then he does the drop your buffs. Brand new start to Survivor, Ghost Island. All right, so they're going to shuffle again. And Desi, why, Jeff, why? Mm. So Stephanie's very unhappy to go out fifth and didn't get the full experience. Now... Are they going to three tribes of five? Sure. Are they, well, but they could go to two tribes of seven. And Mm -hmm. the, um, because there's 15 left, they could pick two tribes of seven. And the other, the odd number person had to go to Ghost Island and stay until after tribal. Yep. And uh, which protects them, but also they go to the losing tribe. Yep. And then it's still 7-7. Seven, seven. Right. I think so. the most likely answer is what Mike K was talking about, that it goes to 3 of 5 ah. in the listener feedback show. That's my bet, too. I think Mike was on to something. I had already forgotten. <laughs> that seems to be a thing with me. So what, what do you think about that? Another shuffle at this point coming up on day 15. We're oh, yeah, I was expecting again. it. Mm-hmm. I've been expecting. I actually was a little bit surprised they didn't do it this week. So I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Do you think it's going to keep things interesting to go down to, to three fives like that? Well, it's... They don't... Going to get a different mix? I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, the old um, Malolo tribe is just... Any way you look at it, the, they're outnumbered still. They've There's on the Malolo tribe right now... 
There's five Old Navidi and two Old Malolo, and the other tribe is 4-4, but as we know, Navidi over there is split. Mm -hmm. But will they stay split if they go back to the other? If the Old Navidi stays together and Old Malolo stays together, then you still got 9-6 to in favor of Navidi. I think there's still a chance that we'll see a continued pagonging, but it may flip the script a little bit on some of the, the comfortable five that are in new Malolo right now. Well, I hope the brand new start is they just throw everything in. There's no so many this or so many that. Just throw 15 buffs in a basket and let them pick it. Yeah, they don't typically do that. I know they and, don't. And for one of those three tribes... It's a full-on start from the beginning, which can be super, super challenging. We know that that tends to grind that tribe down, and yep. it really ends up hurting them. So, I don't know. Unless, um, because there's some uh, discord within Old Navidi, but I don't know how close Chris and Angela are with the other five members on the, on the Malolo tribe. So... Or if Dominic and Wendell are closer. So I don't know which way they're going to go with that. Probably just depends on how they get selected. But mm -hmm. I think it'd be interesting to shake it up again. Yeah, mix it up. I think that that's going to be good because sometimes the pagonging, like we're seeing on New Malolo right now, gets a little tiring. It's yeah. just not as exciting to see. Are, are you going to be excited to see him choose between Jenna and Michael for the next well, one? Well, exactly. That could have been very, um, you know, the easy pickings. And now it's like we don't know who how it's going to play out because we don't even know what tribes they're going to be on. It adds an element of the unknown and some <laughs> excitement coming into how you look forward to the next week and how things are going to play out Absolutely. there for sure. Absolutely. Yep, excited about that. How about a GSFL update? Okay. Brandon from Alabama and Mike K from SoCal are tied for first oh, with cool. 19 Down points. Down to two. Nice. Yes. Eight people lost their USB 24. Stacy. Yep. Sorry, baby. 68 people lost a safe point. And congratulations, <laughs> 23 people gained a vote off point. Good job. I went back and forth on that. I. Mm. I just decided that I wasn't going to abandon her. So, well, that's true. I wouldn't have believed you, but you told me beforehand. So, <laughs> okay. You wouldn't have believed it. All right. It's like, yeah, that's a likely story now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he did tell me that. So, okay. The side challenge tied in first with 17 points Brandon and Jonathan. Oh, good. Good job, guys. With 16 points. You're afraid I'm going to read it at yeah, this point? Yeah, you're going to read it. I'm going to let you wait and see. Okay. Where She's you turning fall. the, I'm the turn, paper away from me. Turning it away from me. Somehow you with think I, did, I didn't already points, read it. With 16 points, Cold Mike, Jeremiah, and Randy. With 15, James and Shannon, Kitty Cat, Parker, and Stacy. And with 14, Jay Kindred. All right. So we're spreading out a little more there now. Yep. A little like, bit. Just like with the bigger group. Okay. It's tracking. I'm ahead of you. That's all I care. <laughs> yeah, but you're not, not part of the much, side challenge. You're not playing the same game that I am. I know. The stakes aren't the same. Yes, I know. But I'm saying I'm content. I'm ahead of you. Okay. <laughs> Only one well, point. You were, you but were I'm gloating content. when I lost my USB I earlier. I was not Yes, gloating. you were. I was not. You were happy. I you're, said. You're happy that we're back on it's even good par, that right? We both have lost our USB now. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't the only wasn't thing that you clothing. said. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. That was funny. What's not? She was thrilled that I lost my USB no, this week. No, I actually week. forgot that she was USB. Oh, you forgot. By the end yes. of Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. Yes. All right. You play the memory card And then card I remembered there. it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. And you conveniently I was forgot just, the other things that you said along the way. I was completely absorbed that you lost the three points because mm -hmm. you had her safe, too. Yes. Because of your bold move, <laughs> you had her safe, too. Yeah, so. yep. cost me this week, but I'll make up for it next week. <laughs> uh -huh. Lots of questions as to how it's going to play out. So looking forward to that already. What we're really looking forward to is hearing what the other super fans thought about this episode. We've got a voicemail line, 206-350-1547. There's a toll-free version. 
844-643-8737 if you need that. And you can always record your own and send it in an email to Show at gmail.com. And if for whatever reason you're not comfortable with your own voice being out there, you can send it just as email, as a text, and either Joanne or I will read it into the listener feedback show for you. That's when we turn the reins over to you. We're interested in your responses, uh, what you saw, maybe something that we didn't cover in the recap. Yeah, what did we miss? We've done the broad strokes here. There might have been a significant moment you picked up on, maybe something based on your life experience that you saw that you can help us view through another perspective another filter that may may have significance in the context of the game that we didn't quite capture as far as you were concerned we're looking forward to hearing from you we're looking for that feedback to be in that three minute range we've had some great feed feedback shows this season yes, we have. over 20 super fans a week that kind of thing we had it just came pouring in last week i think i don't know that it'll be as much this week that there was a strong response to brendan Mm-hmm. getting knocked out i don't know if steph's gonna merit that same level of response or not but i just kind of blocked all that i just kind of went okay he's gone forget it move on mm-hmm. and just i didn't dwell okay we're talking about the super fans perspective on it not joanne's reaction know, to it though i'm still surprised at that yeah okay i'll just ponder it over here all right yeah <laughs> but what did that mean to me joanne that's true. We're excited <laughs> to hear your thoughts on this week's episode and your predictions for what we can expect next as we get ready for another shuffle. You looking forward to that? What do you think it'll mean to the game as a whole? Are, are these Navidi 5, are they going to get uh, spun around? Are they going to get thrown in the blender? Are they going to lose their power? Or are they somehow going to survive this? Don't look at me unless you want me to start answering. <laughs> This is the segment where we request know, feedback from the other at super me fans. And saying, what do you you're, do? You do you you're do. the co host. Okay, maintain your perspective. Stop it. We're looking forward to hearing from Hush. you. That's due Saturday noon Pacific time. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. I have no opinion on who's going on next. <laughs> Unless I see a, some pictures or. Something I don't need, I don't know. They didn't give it up last time. There's a pretty clear trend for old Malolo right now. So yeah, numbers Just are against give them. Give us give us more of them to choose from. Mm-hmm. I guess because <laughs> you don't know where they're going to be. Right. What if they're all together? Wow, that could happen. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, then that'd be awesome. Yep, that too could be excited. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a good one. Good night, everybody.